some of the details of some of the things you found out in that 14 hours, that's a lot of time to be missing. It's not like most people got an hour or two, but that's 14 hours. Um, tell all the listeners, what, what did you find out about some of that? Well, what, what I found out that I was abducted again pretty much by the same identical craft and same identical beings, as I would say, or robots. And I think they had really come to get a trans, uh, something out of my nose because she kept messing with my nose. But anyhow, oh. we had an actual, I had told myself in my mind at this time, if it ever happened again, that I was going to have actual physical evidence with me. So we got into an actual fight. Uh, she had me up up against the wall trying to get this out. My nose was bleeding and all. Oh, let me ask you right there. So she had you pinned against the wall with her long fingers up in your mouth and nose trying to dig that out. And, of course, who wants that to happen to him? So you're fighting back. Is that correct? Right. I'd have oh, enough of this bull. Buddy, I don't blame I, you. I I was thinking, you know, I don't know where we are, or how high we are, or even if we off the ground or in a spaceship. <clears throat> but if I go out that door, I'm gonna wrap my arms around her neck and take her with me. Cause when I wake up, I'm gonna have her in my cold dead hands. I gotta ask you, when you was in a fight, what do you think you ever got some of her skin underneath your fingernails? That's well, good, that'd be good DNA right there. Of course, I know it's been a I, while ago, but I actually had her blood on my t-shirt she now, was bleeding black okay. blood i was gonna ask you what color it was it was black black and i had beat her head against that wall until that old big ugly creature come over and pull me off of her again now he's robotic right yeah, he's robotic okay and, okay and strong i guess dang go on he, but i i had it made up in my mind this wasn't gonna happen no more and it's just like somebody pulling up in your front yard and throwing, come kicking down your door and throwing you in a van. That's a crime. That's abduction. Well, and that's I what. Put yeah, it. absolutely. You didn't volunteer for that. They, they look. They took you against your will, and then they try to erase your memory, not because they got empathy for you, because they don't. They want to cover their tracks. Right. So okay. So now what? So now you're fighting with her. What what happened then? Well, we actually got in a physical fight. I was beating her head against a wall. Well, I think, uh, I'm at, well, at one time into this, I was thinking she's coming to kill me. I know her. I know her. She's going to kill me. And this was in my mind when I first woke up and seen out of, uh, you know, when I first got on the ship and uh, we went through a thing and I actually remember her killing me and maybe even bring me back. Now, I don't remember the coming back or nothing, but I remember I didn't want to come back. And uh, they put me back down in my boat and left. And I had blood from one end of my shirt to another. Not only my blood, but I had her blood, too. Oh, I did. You, you still got that shirt? There's some more great DNA. I, I wish I did. Yeah, I don't believe it. It's kind of like the first time when we got abducted the first time. Well, that's, I was yeah. worried about getting the disease, and I went in and uh, hey, absolutely took all my clothes off and all, put them in a bag. This is over at Charlie's in 73, and I poured a gallon of bleach over my head and washed it off. And it was kind of a similar thing this time. I was bleeding so bad, and I... I didn't want my wife to see me because she'd think I'd been out in a bar fighting or something. You know, she knew I didn't like to drink or nothing, but I looked like hell. She'd think I'd been in a car wreck or something, maybe. Well, well, I mean, they killed you and brought you back, possibly. I mean, how much more uh, terrorizing can you go to? Wow. Go ahead. But anyhow, that's when... Uh, that that's when I actually died, I believe, and, and came back. They put me back out the craft, and that's when I went home, noticed the blood. Well, I got down in the water, and I kind of washed my shirt out the best I could before all. Uh, because it was uh, 
this was May, so it was warm enough I could get in the water some. And I got a, when I got home, I just throw my shirt away and washed off out of my shed with a water hose and all and went in there and told my wife that I had been late getting in. She kept asking me what happened. Well, I I refused, pretty much refused to answer. Because, again, I didn't want to talk to, talk to nobody about this. Didn't want to talk to my family about it. And I wouldn't be here talking about this today if it hadn't been for Philip Mantle. Yeah, well, I gotta, I gotta tell you, that's that's a hard, that's very hard. What you went through, not once but twice, that you know of, and I, you know that's and, and against your will. Yeah, every every bit of this was against my will, and it goes in uh, great detail in the book uh, about what happened. I mean, it's a minute to minute account in the book, and it's pretty long in the. Uh, chapter 13 in the Bud, Hypnos- Bud Hopkins hypnosis session. So I would advise anybody that's interested in this thing, you know, to kind of read through this hypnosis and look at it and see what really happened. Plus it brought out some stuff in 19- that happened in 73. There was actually a car parked there. And I remember in 73, and this couple was making out in a car, you know, the way kids used to do. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, I actually remembered the tag number on this car. Oh, wow. And that came out. And later on, I got a detective. It was bothering me so much that uh, I hired a detective to hunt this person down. Well, it ended up this couple, this people had got married. He died just before all this started coming out in the book. I would love to interview him. Yeah. He's in a nursing home with Alzheimer's, but she remembers. Oh, Oh, wow. She remembers seeing that craft, and she remembers wanting to call the law. But again, back then, nobody had cell phones or anything. You know, all you had. Yeah, not only that, that you're talking the deep, deep south. I've been down there back in '73. That was a different. That was a whole different world back then. Than it is now. I mean, really. Oh yeah, well, we still had blue laws in the evenings. So right. I said, well, y'all stopped to buy something to drink. Well, that was bull because you don't. This is Southern Baptist country down here. The the Bible Belt. In some and, of the counties, you you can't even get alcohol but to this day. So right, right. And, and the laws was back then, after a certain time of the day, they pretty much just shut businesses down. And you couldn't buy things like beer, nothing to drink. Mm-hmm. Of course, I I would drink one every now and then just to be sociable a little bit. And don't hardly drink none at all now. But let me, let me ask you this, um, Calvin. Um, in your encounters with that lady, she seemed to be like the leader, right? The lady alien? I think she was in full control. Right. So uh, th- now, um, did you ever kind of come up with an um, an idea or, or a plan of what their hidden agenda was with you or what they were doing there? I have absolutely no idea. Mm-hmm. The only thing I could come up with is uh, maybe we are guinea pigs to them experiments. Maybe they're trying to coexist with coexist with us. Um and you said she looked a lot more human than most. Is that is something like that? Is that what you said? I believe Actually besides the hair and all, if you had hair on her, she could walk down the street and you really wouldn't even recognize and that's you a know, scary thought right there. Because how is. many I mean who knows how many is out there that walks among us. Well, I've had people that claim they was walk-ins and uh, come up and told me she, this was a female, and I don't know if it's true or not. Mm-hmm. She said that she was a walk-in and she wanted to prove to everybody. She said, would you come up to my apartment and there's something I want to ask you. <laughs> I said, said sure. You, this Now, this is while I was in Florida. Mm-hmm. So I went up to the apartment. I was kind of distance toward everybody 
she lived six same stories up. We walked on the balcony. She said, I want to show you something. She said, let's prove to everybody that we could fly and that what we really are. I thought, she's a damn basket case, and I'm up here 16, hour, 16 oh. floors high with Yeah, I she's going to grab you and jump. Oh, my goodness. I said, let's do. I said, ladies first. Go <laughs> on, young lady. <laughs> And I'll follow suit. <laughs> well, and that I was got very a gentleman, gentlemanly of you. <laughs> yeah. I got a chance to gracefully back out and get out of that apartment. I don't even know why my stupid self even went up there. Maybe I've been on a hunt for information yeah. all my life, but I didn't want to come out and ask anybody. And that's why, you know, this friend of mine come up and suggested going to Bud. I thought that was a good idea. That way I wasn't directly involved, I thought. Mm-hmm. But Bud, Bud knew me. He knew my name and all that. I didn't figure he'd even know me or remember me. Well, I, I, got, I, I tell you, Calvin, I can remember a long time ago when, when this happened. You know, you, Of course, there wasn't much about it, just on a few shows, a little tidbits about you know you and your friend. But I think it's great that you're coming out with this information to educate these people. And, and, and you weren't, listen, you didn't volunteer or sign up for this. That's the whole thing. And, and, I mean, you actually had to get in a physical fight for your life. Right. I mean, self-defense, what it was. And uh, back then, I was a, you know, pretty stout little redneck and didn't take a whole lot of bull. I was good-natured. You know, I'd do anything for anybody. But then there's a button you could push on me, and uh, the crazy came out. Well, and, I got to tell you, you know, if, if an alien tried to stick their long fingers up my mouth and out my nose, yeah, I'm going to be fighting too. I don't blame you one bit. My goodness. I don't want nobody doing that, sticking their <laughs> right. fingers up my mouth and nose. And you know that little thing that hangs down in the back of your throat? Yeah. That for a long time, it was swelled up just about where I couldn't even breathe with it. I don't know what that deal is. Well, you know, here's the thing. Uh, you know, these aliens, who knows what kind of pathogens or germs or whatever they've got on them that can kill us, maybe wipe out our whole thing. It's a wonder, you, did, did you get an infection or anything? Did you get sick afterwards? Were you sick? Well, I didn't feel real good, but that could have been for mentally. And you talking about that, you know how they almost wiped out the Indians. We infected uh, the right. blankets with small pots. Mm-hmm. You gave them the blankets, and they liked to wipe every one of them out. Right. That, and that ain't right. No, and she's got her fingers down your mouth and up your nose. I mean, my God. Jeez. Uh-uh. Now, you know, did you have an inclination to bite her fingers, or, or what was going through your mind besides fighting for your life? Jeez. Well... It's hard to think about biting anything when you're grasping for air. Yeah, that's that, yeah, that's a good point. And uh, somebody asked me that. The only reflex you could think of is just grabbing her damn hand, jerking it out of her mouth, and pretty much doing what I did. I knew it wasn't going to be no apologies from her this time. We're not going to harm you. You know, you're not doing too good a job not harming me. <laughs> really? So... Sure. so um, did, now, whenever they like immobilized you, was it an injection that, that they did, or did they have any kind of tools or weapons that you noticed? I didn't notice any. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when they kind of give me that injection, it just calmed me down. I, I call it a go-to-hell shot because I didn't care. Yeah. But it didn't seem to last long. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, or maybe you're your body takes over self-protection mode and it is not strong enough to last long. Maybe they're experimenting with some of this. Yeah, that's a good point. There's here's a, a lot, lot of ahead. questions I'd love to ask about it too, if I could find Yeah, it. Yeah, and here's the thing, you know, if you or me, if we, we took an injection and, and went to somebody's house and injected them and took them out and did some experiments on them, tried to race their brain and put them back. I don't think there's a court or a law system that would say, well, you didn't know better because you're different. They'd let us go. I think they'd throw away the key. Oh, and, they would. <laughs> right, exactly. And, I mean, and I, 
I don't think these bees have empathy at all. Let me ask this. If you had to put them in a category of good or bad or ugly, what which one of the three would you put them into? 